Hey everybody, how's it going? I hope you're having a lovely day. So today I'd like to go over a CBS piece from 60 Minutes where they were going over military price gouging. I'm not going to go over the price gouging part so much as the part that I'm more interested in, which is the fact that the military is incapable of fixing their own equipment and just some of the uh, moral implications on society that I think that this has when it's happening with something like the United States military. Uh, Spoiler alert for anybody who didn't watch the video yet, um, the U.S. military is occasionally wasteful in its spending. I know, I know. Shocker. In 2012, he was tasked to take over the reins of the troubled F-35 Joint Strike Fighter program. It was seven years behind schedule and $90 billion over the original estimate. But Bogdan told us that the biggest costs are yet to come for support and maintenance, which could end up costing taxpayers $1.3 trillion. We may not be able to buy as many F-35s as we thought, Bogdan said, because it doesn't make a whole lot of sense to buy more airplanes when you can't afford the ones you have. The Pentagon had ceded control of the program to Lockheed Martin. The contractor is delivering the aircraft. The Pentagon has paid to design and build, but under the contract, Lockheed and its suppliers retain control of the design and repair data the proprietary information needed to fix and upgrade the plane. Does this sound familiar? So you spend billions and billions of dollars to get this plane built, and it doesn't actually belong to the Department of Defense? Well, the system belongs to the department, but the data underlying the design of the airplane does not. Wait, so we can't maintain and sustain these planes without Lockheed? Correct. And that's because we didn't buy or negotiate up front getting the technical data we needed so that when a part breaks, the DOD can fix it themselves. When a part breaks, it's likely to come from a subcontractor like Transdime, which has seen its stock soar as it buys up companies the military depends on for spare parts. Founder Nick Howley has twice been called before Congress over accusations of price gouging. Shay Assad's review team found that the government will pay the company $119 million for parts that usually cost $28 million. So there's so many ways to dig into this. So the first thing is, a lot of people will say on my channel, when somebody, when a customer purchases something from a company that has anti-repair practices, whether I'm talking about Apple going out of their way to make sure the LCD by itself is no longer made available on newer MacBooks so that it is much more expensive if you have a cracked screen, or them going out of their way to make it so that you need a proprietary calibration tool if you want your sleep sensor to work again. All different types of anti-repair stuff that didn't exist and didn't have to exist and wasn't really an issue back 10 or 15 years ago. They'll say something that usually blames the customer. The customer is a moron. They should have known this anti-repair practice existed, even if they're not a professional in repair, even if it wasn't listed on the box, even if they don't advertise this. The customer should have known somehow that the company that advertises itself as sustainable and green and recycling friendly would do everything necessary to make a repair difficult after the fact. The Pentagon wasn't even aware of this stuff. If the Pentagon is not going to be aware of it, what awareness do you think a normal customer is going to have of these practices until they experience it? What I'm more interested in here is how this is going to affect the morale of our society. What does America stand for, or at least claim to stand for? Freedom, sovereignty, property rights, individual rights and freedoms. Yet, not only has our culture over the past 15 to 20 years shifted to the point where you don't really own what it is you pay for, but the main primary fighting force that will be responsible for defending us against foreign adversaries if we were to be invaded doesn't even have ownership over what they spend trillions of dollars on. Does this not seem weird to you? Like, at the end of the day, if we stand for sovereignty, property rights, individual rights, and freedom, yet the people who are fighting on behalf of our freedom, or at least, well, in theory theoretically supposed to be fighting on behalf of our freedom, don't have that. What does that say for us? What are we defending? It's a really interesting question to ask because so many of the things that we prided ourselves on 50 to 70 years ago, or dare I say it, even 20 to 30 years ago, again, you know, the self-reliance, independence, and everything else, the primary fighting force for our country doesn't even have. And it's not because they're dealing with foreign adversaries. It's because they're dealing with domestic adversaries. And the fact that we have neglected to pay attention to this for such a long time that a group that has an over $700 billion budget doesn't have the ability to be able to fix what they own. If the Pentagon can't figure this out, how the hell are we supposed to figure this out? And God, God's honest truth, if the Pentagon cannot figure out how to repair what they own or how to negotiate for the ability to repair what they own. What chance do I have to ever negotiate getting an LCD cell for a MacBook back like what I'm holding in my hand? How do I ever expect or imagine to be able to have the ability to calibrate a sleep sensor on a new MacBook when 
the DOD can't even fix an F-35. It's depressing to listen to this type of stuff. The saddest part of this is that none of this is news. The New York Times went over this four years ago, and so did I. The question is not whether we know that it's an issue, but when are we going to do something about it, and whether we're going to wait to do something about it until it's too late. That's it for today, and as always, I hope you learned something. I'll see you all in the next video. Bye now. Look at this cute little berry. She stayed on the right left side of the chair the entire time instead of trying to jump across my keyboard and stop the video. She deserves a treat. Maybe she'll get a treat later. What a good kitty. Good girl. Good girl.